Eisen wanted to be a transcendent being, somebody who shattered the boundaries, the barriers between Shinigami and Hollow to become something brand new, something greater, something all powerful. And because this was Eisen's ultimate goal, his plan, the sequence of chapters that made up the fight against him turned out to be wholly unique within the series. Eisen's evolution was a lengthy and gradual process, spanning multiple volumes, including a 23-chapter mini-arc called Deicide, which chronicled Eisen's rise to power and his eventual fall from grace as he came closest to achieving his goals. In many ways, Eisen's evolution was slowly built up by Kubo as a crescendo, eventually reaching a massive pinnacle of power later on down the line. But when the evolution begins, how it starts out is actually surprisingly simple and understated, and it all begins with Ichigo landing a particularly devastating Getsuga Tensho. This is one of my favourite sequences visually. I absolutely love how it looks. I love the two full body shots of Ichigo and Aizen engaging in battle like that, Aizen taking a serious wound, and everything just looks so dynamic. But Aizen's serious wound wouldn't remain that way for very long, as Ichigo watches as these strange cracks appear on Aizen's body. They seem to spread across his chest and heal the injury that he's taken. Ichigo, I think, rightly surmises this to be high-speed regeneration, a hollow technique, but Aizen's very quick to shut him down and say that, of course, he would never hollow fi he would never do something like that. This is something beyond that, and Aizen opens his jacket to reveal the truth, the Hogyoku is embedded within the centre of his chest. That strange, mysterious orb is pulsating in the middle of Aizen's torso, protecting him from harm. The Hogyoku is instinctively healing him as Aizen reveals that he has subjugated this all-powerful orb and become its master after fusing with it. Aizen has become incredibly durable. Presumably this is also how he survives things like a point-blank Ito Kaso from Yamamoto without really taking any real damage. And while this is the first we would learn of Aizen fusing with the Hogyoku, aside from a subtle hint much earlier in the series, we would have no idea the far-reaching ramifications for this character this move would yet have. Now, as the fight progresses, Ishin gets involved and begins battling Aizen himself. Aizen reveals that the Hogyoku has finally awoken and begun to understand who he truly is. Of course, we found out not too long ago that the true power of the Hogyoku who was to manifest the desires of those around it as long as they themselves were actually capable of realising those desires. And of course, being one of the most powerful beings in the series, Aizen is near capable of anything. And at this point in the story, he wants to transcend, to become that being greater than Shinigami and Hollow, and that is what the Hogyoku is going to bestow upon him, a true evolutionary transformation. And that transformation begins as the Hogyoku starts to understand him, Aizen's body begins to change, begins to break down. This strange white substance bursts out of either side of the Hogyoku and almost completely envelops Aizen, attaching to his body, wrapping around him these white tendrils of this strange goo latch onto him and all of it solidifies and hardens when it makes contact with him, seemingly creating a sort of protective outer shell. Aizen is changing into something at this point, but we don't get to see just yet what that is, because as far as I'm concerned, the transformation, the evolution, is halted by Urahara Kisuke, who shows up in the nick of time and shoots Aizen through the back with some kind of an energy blast. And it seems to me like Kisuke doing this does momentarily put the pause on the Hogyoku changing Aizen. Um, and there are a couple of reasons I think this. The first one is pretty simple, pretty visual. That transformation seemed to be happening quite rapidly. Whatever that white goo is, it was flowing out of the Hogyoku and completely caking Aizen, only for it to totally stop midway through evolution after Kisuke blasts him. And the other reason is because Kubo did one of his small chapter sketches and it showed the Hogyoku almost like sprouting angelic wings, signifying this transformation, only to be blasted through by some kind of attack, which again to me implies that that has halted 
momentarily the transformation. And so because of this, Eisen is sort of stuck in a kind of evolutionary limbo. He still basically looks exactly the same. There are still remnants of his old outfit underneath whatever this new change is. But whatever the Hogyoku has been coating him in is kind of covering him like a sort of ripped, jagged cloak of sorts. Those tendrils that were latching onto him have frozen and hardened and, now, and are now looking like these strange spikes protruding from his shoulders. After Kisuke hits Aizen with a Hardo 91, Aizen emerges from the Kido, again looking slightly different as though that damage he took has enabled the Hogyoku to continue on with its transformation. That white goo that was covering Aizen has now almost completely encased his torso, his body, Whatever was there before of his old outfit, you now basically can't see it at all. Instead, he is this completely white being, almost looks like a strange statue of sorts. The Hogyoku is prominently visible in the center of his chest, and there also is that strange cross that's been like etched into his torso, spreading out from the center point where the Hogyoku lies. But perhaps more obviously than that, the top of Aizen's body has begun to change as well. His face is now half obscured by this strange white, almost like a half mask thing that is going up and over his head. It looks like he has begun to transform as well, but again being caught in the middle of it. His hands are an important part of this. They still look normal. They haven't yet been covered by whatever this strange material is, and he's still gripping his sword like normal as well. But there actually is a change in how strong he has become. Simply by striking Kisuke with his bare hand, he slashes him as though he were striking him with a sword. So Aizen himself is already becoming considerably more powerful physically than he was before. There is this idea that Aizen's inferiority is really coming through here, and Aizen's early, early stage evolution is quite obviously affecting him mentally as well. He's dropping his guard in many cases, he's becoming way more reckless and less calculating than Aizen used to be and all of this would lead to his eventual downfall. However, because Aizen let his guard down, he allowed Kisuke to get too close, and Kisuke is able to effectively kill him outright for the very first time in this big all-star battle royale. Basically, Kisuke seals off Aizen's wrists, which is where basically Shinigami's Reiatsu flows from, causing it to violently back up inside Aizen and basically explode him from the inside out. There's a massive pillar of energy as Aizen erupts. He detonates, essentially. Kisuke kind of turns him into a bomb. And were this anybody else, they would have instantly been killed. And that's kind of scary how quickly Kisuke can actually kill someone of this caliber. But of course... This is Aizen, and the Hogyoku is firmly in control. And at this stage, it needs a host, and so it can't be letting Aizen die without transforming. And from the smoke, Aizen emerges once again. And Kubo's emphasis on the Hogyoku here, I think, really is supposed to show who is actually calling the shots. And so Aizen's first transformation is finally complete. He is encased head to toe in this strange white garb. Where his head was only half covered originally, it's now completely entombed within this new alien. Really weird looking, almost larvae-like cocoon form. And he does look strange. There's no getting around it, of course. Back in the day, the biggest name people had for him was Condom Eisen, which I totally get. He does look kind of weird. But at the same time... I actually think this form is pretty cool. There is a otherworldly eeriness to it. He does look inhuman at this point. He has these strange glassy purple eyes, an expressionless blank face. As Ishin himself says, it's like facing off against a ghost. And there are more reasons for that, which we'll get into in a minute. If we go back to that idea of Aizen being killed, that is massively important for his evolutionary process. That eventually becomes a theme that this character undergoes, that he must die, or at least he must face the fear of death, that fear of impending oblivion to push himself even further beyond than where he was previously, to force the next stage of his evolution upon himself. So Kisuke almost technically succeeded in killing him here, but because of the situation, Aizen only emerged from the flames stronger than ever before. And what I think is honestly really cool about this form, even if you do think he looks a little bit silly, 
Kubo is taking this idea of a metamorphosis totally literally. Aizen is literally in a cocoon right now. And it's really, it's honestly really cool because obviously inside a cocoon, when something is undergoing that transformation, that change, it breaks down entirely before re being reborn as something brand new. And Aizen technically does not exist at the moment within this strange cocoon. The Hogyoku is quite literally breaking down his body and rebuilding it, reconstituting it into something new, something even more powerful, something beyond what he was before. And there are a couple of hints to this, which I think are really nice little details. The first one being Aizen punctures his own wrist to pull out the rings that Kisuke sealed him with before to show that it wasn't enough to kill him. But what's really cool about that, A, of course, the fact that Aizen just breaks into his own skin to retrieve this ring, but secondly, he pulls the ring out completely intact. And of course, how is he going to do that if there is a wrist around it to prevent that from happening? There isn't. There's nothing inside this strange white outer shell. Aizen himself is gone, broken down into some into some alien-like miasma, which we'll get an even better look at later on. But Aizen in this new cocoon form has already seemingly powered up in numerous ways. He appears immediately in the midst of the fight with everyone. No one notices he's there until he is there. And that's a couple of reasons. Perhaps he has gotten faster, but of course the main reason is that Ishin and Kisuke can no longer sense his presence, which is this idea of transcendence, which was a concept introduced by Kubo very late into the Iran car arc, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But Aizen himself has changed and evolved in ways I certainly didn't expect here. He's become He has become considerably more dexterous, considerably more physical flipping over, doing these very strange, inhuman-like stunts to combat Kisuke and Ishin at the same time. There's one moment where Ishin tries to attack him with his blade from above. Aizen kind of flips up onto one leg and puts the other leg up into the sky to block that blade and then flips over to block Kisuke as well. And so he's battling both of them at the same time and appears to be considerably more, like I said, dexterous than before, and his physical prowess has been enhanced greatly to near inhuman levels. Another important thing to point out, which is a touchstone that we need to keep an eye on as Aizen evolves, is the situation with his hands. And at the moment, he still has normal hands, except for the fact that they are now covered in that white uh, outer layer, that white outer shell, but they are normal, and he's still clutching his sword as you normally would, but that is about to change. As Yoroichi appears above him, lands on Aizen, and pummels him from above, he emerges again from the rubble. Now his outer casing is absolutely covered in cracks and I think he actually looks really cool here. This is where he actually looks kind of haunting, really kind of creepy. I think he's honestly got this kind of really cool ghostly Templar vibe going on here that does look quite ominous. I think when Kubo adds the shadows, adds the cracks, he definitely looks a little creepier than he did when he was brand new. Um, and so I think his design improves as this fight goes on. But the most important thing here to note is that Aizen's arm is now fusing with his Zanpak toe. After he rises from Yoroichi's attack, you can see it, and this is the most overt it looks as well uh, until a bit later on, but it's quite obvious that his arm is now messily fusing with his own blade. So let's go back to that idea of transcendence. This was a concept that Kubo introduced pretty late into the Iran car arc to try and explain, I think, just how powerful Aizen is actually becoming and then Ichigo in turn as well. But it's this idea essentially of a hierarchy of power. Uh, basically, Aizen describes it as people being having certain dimensions. There are two-dimensional beings, three-dimensional and potentially even four-dimensional beings as well. Regular Shinigami like Kisuke and Ishin are two-dimensional beings, and by evolving to this form, by in entering his cocoon state, Aizen has become a three-dimensional being. The first real stage of transcendence is upon him as the Hogyoku rewrites his Reiatsu. And we know this because Ishin mentions that ever since Aizen has entered this weird, ghostly form, he hasn't been able to feel him at all. Certainly he can see Aizen, and if he can land a hit on him, I guess he's tangible. But to Ishin, it's like he's fighting nothing. It's like there's nobody there. And it's because he can't sense anything coming from Aizen whatsoever, because he, they are not on the same plane as Aizen at this point in time. To understand Aizen... 
to feel his presence, you must be on the same plane of power, plane of existence as him, and Ishin and Kisuke currently aren't. I do have a theory that Ishin does very, very briefly reach that same dimension as Aizen, if only for a split second when he lands his point-blank Getsuga Tensho on him, because Aizen again emerges from the flame, but he has a serious wound, a gaping crack in his head, and he, and he comments that he actually understood that attack. It was a fine attack that he actually felt, and it was palpable. And so, in my opinion, that is Ishin rising and meeting this, this power level for a mere split second. It's only my opinion, but that, in my eyes, is why Aizen comments that that was an attack that he actually understood. It was on the same level as him, and why Ishin was able to do so much damage with it as well. And again, another really awesome moment here. Aizen's head is split open, and they get a decent look at what's going on inside, and it it is nothing. There is a strange almost purple, bubbling, sort of twisting miasma inside, and that's because that is all Aizen is currently, that's all that's going on inside this cocoon at the moment. So, even if you do think it's ridiculous, I love this theme, I love Kubo going real, you know, just actually going so literal with this idea of a butterfly-style metamorphosis. Um, I think it's really, really cool. Of course, our hero's ace in the hole, although they don't know it just yet, is Ichigo. He can still feel Aizen's Reiatsu, and he comments, you know, that Aizen's just a total monster and there's no way they can defeat him. But Ishin realises that Ichigo, knowing that, means that he is still on the same plane as Aizen even now. And so he may be their trump card in the end. But Aizen's cocoon shatters completely, his face just sort of falls apart and the cocoon turns into a flowing collar, revealing his new form underneath. And he looks mostly exactly the same, except his hair is now absolutely flowing and almost angelic, and he has strange new eyes, purple and white eyes. Um, Revealing, of course, that he has gone undergone something completely different from holification, although in the black and white manga, it wasn't quite so obvious. At this point, Aizen has really, truly transcended, and he makes his way to the, to the real Karakura town hiding in Soul Society. Aizen's power is so great that he is emitting such a tremendous reiatsu that it dissolves and destroys things simply by coming into contact with them. As we see in the Dangai, when he and Gin are making their way to Soul Society, Kotatsu, the cleaner, barrels towards them. Gin is terrified. He says this is a being of reason, not of reiatsu. But Aizen merely smirks, and as Kotatsu collides with him, it is completely obliterated. You can see its spine, which is a pretty cool detail. And Aizen just sort of smirks at him, saying, you know, there's nothing to fear. Reason is just a shield for those that cower behind it, and his new power defies even reason itself. And at this point, Aizen is waltzing through the real Karakura town. There is a really cool moment that I always loved, where he comes across a regular human being who is, unfortunately for him, woken up at the wrong time, and Aizen and walks straight past him and just annihilates, erases half of this guy's body from existence. And there's a just a really sinister, macabre panel of Aizen smirking shadows on his face as he walks towards the screen, and behind him he's just leaving a trail of bifurcated, half-destroyed bodies in his wake. It's one of the only panels in the series, I think, where Aizen looks genuinely evil. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's pretty cool, to be honest with you. He does look really badass here. Now, interestingly, this is, of course, when Gein enacts his revenge against Aizen, and he's strong enough in this, uh, at this point of the story, apparently, for his Bankai to not only affect and destroy Aizen's body, but for him to even be able to go up to Aizen and touch his chest with his bare hand without facing, apparently, any repercussions. Managing to pull off his assassination attempt, Gein completely ruptures Aizen's body. We see it split almost totally in two, the Hogyoku silt still suspended in midair where it once was in Aizen's chest. There is another nice small detail here where Aizen attempts to lunge for Gein in a last-ditch effort to stop him from escaping, and although Gein manages to leap out of the way, Aizen must brush him ever so slightly, because when Gein looks down at his forearm later, a big chunk of it is completely gone. It is basically totally dissolved away. So although Gein is able to touch Aizen's chest of his own volition, it seems if Aizen wanted to, he could still destroy Gein's body simply by touching him. So I'm guessing in that scenario, it's just something that Aizen maybe chose to do because he was lashing out in anger. 
I'm not entirely sure. And so at this point, this is Aizen's second death, as he crumples to the floor, collapsing to the ground, his body almost entirely rent in two. He seemingly has died once again, and perhaps this time it is over, as Gin has managed to successfully steal the Hogyoku away from its master and escaped. Except, of course, it's not that easy. Like I said, the Hogyoku sees Aizen as its master no matter what at this point, and Aizen will always be its host. And so because of that, the Hogyoku forces another transformation upon Aizen, the final, at least he thinks, stage of his evolution. His body stitches itself back together again. We get to see um, this almost flesh-like cross appear in the centre of the massive gaping wound that's now there in the middle of his body that makes him look more hollow-like than ever. There's definitely a sense that as he evolves, he is also degenerating further and further into hollowdom, even though he himself doesn't believe it to be so. It is this fusion, this, this transcendence of Shinigami and Hollow that makes him appear to be an almost mixture of the two, the deeper in he gets. But Aizen, you know, roars and screams as his body is like seemingly reanimated. He's lifted up from the ground. His body fixes itself. Reiatsu bursts out of the new part of his body that he has to form wings. What's kind of strange about this panel is it looks like the wings burst out the front of his body, but I guess because that cross does go through to the back of him as well, it could easily be the back. And Gin realises in horror the, although the Hogyoku no longer rests within Aizen, it still belongs to him. And Aizen emerges from this pillar of light in probably his most infamous form yet, known coll colloquially online back in the day as Butterflyzen. He has become effectively a butterfly. Um, you know, some parts of this form do look pretty cool. His face has changed in subtle but important ways. Um, he, he's, he has become more inhuman, more alien. He's lost his eyebrows, he's lost that hair curl that's very eyes, and in its place, he has this strange black diamond embedded in his forehead. His pupils are gone, leaving his eyes looking distinctively blank, and his collar has changed into these strange purple veins that are attaching to the Hogyoku itself. His robe that he was wearing is elongated and shredded at the bottom, and of course, the trademark of this form, he now has massive butterfly wings attached to his back. This is, of course, the logical end point for this very literal metamorphosis. Aizen has become a butterfly, born again out of this cocoon, out of this shell, uh, to what he would assume would be his final form. And the reason I say that is because later on against Ichigo, he says that he has reached the conclusion of his evolution, which is important for what happens later. At this stage, Aizen has properly started to fuse with his Zanpak toe. There is no, no real hand left where his blade is anymore, and he has become truly a real sort of transcendent being. Simply by being around him, the spiritually aware humans just collapse to the ground and can no longer stand up, and that's all of them. They are all now effectively bowing on the floor before Aizen, and... One thing Kubo does to really separate the divine from the normal is teleportation. In our recent video on Kyoraku vs. Liya, I mentioned that once Liya activated his Volsten dig, he, he was able to teleport, because he had become a divine being. Most characters in Bleach have some form of extremely fast movement, um, which is akin to teleportation, but not actually. And so what Aizen does here is literal teleportation, and it's actually pretty interesting how Kubo decides to portray this. His body sh almost shatters into like numerous shards of glass before rebuilding themselves in the location he wants to go. Um, it doesn't seem as though it can be sensed at all, which is really cool, and it's just a totally new, otherworldly style of movement. And it is really cool seeing Aizen fit himself back together again. Difficult, I would say, to portray in a 2D manga. I think it's much easier to tell what's going on in the anime, but it's a really cool concept nonetheless. And Gin can only watch helplessly as the Hogyoku literally just flies back and reforms itself, fitting snugly into the centre of Aizen's chest once again. But Aizen thanks Gin. As I said before, it's that fear of death that Aizen really needs to push him over the brink to allow him to transform and complete his evolution. That's what he really needs, is to feel as though he's actually going to die, to face oblivion 
but come out the other side. And so he thanks Skeen for giving him that final push to what he believes to be his last form. Aizen is using his Reiatsu to pressure the humans around him. He reveals later on that he has intentionally lowered his power at this point so that they can feel it, so that they obviously know how overwhelming and how overbearing he is. But of course, when Ichigo arrives, smashing down onto the battlefield in, you know, easily one of the most iconic and awesome entrances in the entire series, carrying Ishin on his shoulders. This is all something we can talk about much more in, say, a battle analysis in the future. We start to get some clues that Aizen might not be as home free as he thinks he is. And despite Aizen pushing and wanting for Ichigo to evolve all this time to reach greater heights as well and take advantage of the opportunities he's giving him, he might find that he doesn't like what he gets on the other side. Tatsuki notes that she can't sense anything from Ichigo whatsoever, yet she can feel an overwhelming power from Aizen. Initially, this felt like a mistake on Kubo's part, but he does clear it up by saying that Aizen is, is doing this on purpose. But what this means is Ichigo is now at the very least stronger than Aizen is by lowering his power. But at this point in the story, we didn't have any idea what depths that really reached. But of course, we get the ultimate clue that Aizen is not going to be winning this fight when he says to Ichigo that he can't sense anything from him at all. It's one thing for Tatsuki to say it, but if Aizen says it, Aizen should still be able, even if he is lowering his power, he should still be able to sense Ichigo's Reiatsu if Ichigo's on the same plane of existence, on the same dimension as him. And so clearly he's not. Ichigo must be a tier higher in this hierarchy. But at this point in the story, in Aizen's journey towards godhood, he has become completely delusional. Uh, basically manufacturing numerous ever more nonsensical justifications for why he can't sense Ichigo's power or why Ichigo might be seemingly stronger than he is. Of course, the fight begins, and like I said, after locking blades with Ichigo, Aizen comments that the fusion of his right arm with his Zanpak toe must be the end point since he has reached the conclusion of his evolution. So what happens next is absolutely not something Aizen anticipated or maybe even wanted, um, but it happens anyway, which again I think is a really cool way of showing just who is running this show. Ichigo deals a pretty massive hit on Aizen's body, causing Aizen to back off, and suddenly in that moment, as Aizen seems to realise he is struggling, seems to entertain for a mere second that he might actually be losing this fight, another transformation, a final transformation, is forced upon him. This is not one that he consented to, one that he expected to happen, but the Hogyoku will not stand for Aizen struggling or starting to lose against a human. Aizen is no longer in control. If the Hogyoku wants him to change, he will change to kind of to kind of meet the level it wants him to be at, or at least it thinks he should be at. And I think to really hammer home this idea of Aizen's loss of control at this point, this particular evolution, this transformation, is absolutely brutal and looks shockingly painful. Aizen's diamond on his head bursts, seemingly revealing an, a new eye. And this is pure speculation on my part, but I love to, I love to imagine this as thematically being the Hogyoku's eye, you know, like really taking control. Blood drips down Aizen's face. Suddenly, the eye begins to whir into life. Aizen screams at the top of his voice as his head splits in two. A crack runs down the middle of his face. It breaks in half. You don't get to see it, obviously. This transformation is not shown in the manga itself. Although I do think, were this the Thousand Year Blood War arc, knowing how gruesome Kubo got in that arc, I think he probably would have shown it. But we don't get to see it in the Iran arc. There is a fountain of blood. Ichigo looking on it in maybe disgust, maybe pity, maybe both. But Aizen is now effectively at the mercy of the Hogyoku and his new form is revealed. He has become a hunched over monstrosity. Where he once was a potentially angelic butterfly, a sort of pure being, a being of purity, he has become a truly bastardized, demonic version of that, a hellish version of what he once was, revealing perhaps the true monster within. Where his face has split apart, it now reveals a demonic, almost charred black skull. 
Eisen's, the remains of Eisen's face, the skin is still hanging down the side of his head, which is an amazing detail. Kubo loves his body horror, as we know, and this is really feeding into that. He has three hollow holes running down the center of his body, I think really showing now the that, that he is going down that more monstrous route of evolution, that he has been pushed past where he wanted to end up and is just kind of going into full-on corrupted mode here. And the Hogyoku is floating smugly in the centre of that top hollow hole. Again, I think really just showing who is in charge here. Aizen's arm is now completely fused with his blade. There is just no hand mass whatsoever. It just goes straight into the sword now. And his wings, which were once proud, which were once angelic, which were once beautiful, are now these eldritch monstrosities with wriggling tentacles and huge manta ray-esque shrouds with these massive eyes attached to either of them. It is, it's creepy nightmare fuel awesomeness. It looks really, really good. And Aizen himself even notes, you know, oh, I understand, Hogyoku, you, you can't have me losing to a mere human. So he realises that the Hogyoku is behind this, that the Hogyoku is like, this is not happening right now. What's interesting, of course, is that Ichigo is still on a higher dimension than Aizen, and it doesn't seem to matter how much the Hogyoku presses him. It, it cannot account for their difference in power. Now, maybe if, if the fight continued onwards and Aizen was allowed, allowed to evolve three, four more times... Maybe he would reach that power level of Ichigo, which is why I think Ichigo was justified in using the final Getsuka Tensho when he did. But for now, at least, the Hogyoku cannot account for the difference in their strength. However, of course, Ichigo activates the final Getsuga Tensho and unleashes his most powerful ability, Mugetsu, throwing this pitch black curtain of a moonless sky towards Aizen. Aizen realizing finally that Ichigo is on a dimension higher than him, a tier of power higher than him entirely, and that he has totally surpassed him. And Aizen screams, you know, unbelievable. This, you know, he can't bear this thought. But Mugetsu strikes him, cleaving him entirely in two down the middle. We see Aizen roar as this darkness just completely engulfs him, and his body is totally and utterly turned to dust. We see... All of the appendages, the trimmings of this new form of Aizen's just completely shatter and turn to nothingness. And it seems like it's all over. A crippled version of Aizen is flung from Mugetsu and slams into the ground down below. We can see when Ichigo approaches him that Aizen's head is split in two. So Ichigo was going through the kill here and this is the next time that Aizen effectively dies. But the Hogyoku saves his life again, stitching his body back together and allowing him to rise once more. Except, this is no longer the same man he once was. Now, some people I've seen think that Aizen is still going to evolve here, but in my opinion, that's just absolutely not correct at all. What this is supposed to be showing, what we're supposed to see here, is this is the moment Aizen loses everything. He is totally delusional at this point. He has no idea what's actually going on. His face is a tangled, distorted mess of the forms that came before. It's like Ichigo's Mugetsu was so strong it peeled back all the layers and revealed this small man underneath. There's no denying obviously Aizen is still incredibly powerful here but he has lost all of the Hogyoku powers that he had worked so hard to gain and that he had evolved to reach. Basically at this point he has regressed massively back to almost the very beginning. And Aizen also claims that his Zanpakuto is crumbling away because the Hogyoku believes he no longer needs a Zanpakuto. But the Hogyoku is not listening to him anymore. And I don't think that is what that means. I've always thought that was Kyokusui Getsu disappearing of its own accord because Aizen has effectively abandoned it. If Aizen thinks he doesn't need it, then so does Kyokusui Getsu. And I think it was supposed to be very symbolic of Aizen losing control, losing everything he had. And that goes doubly so when Kisuke arrives and Aizen says, you know, I'm about to evolve one last time, and suddenly his face just shatters. Everything that he had on his face that resembles the Hogyoku's power peels away like dry skin, like flakes, just disappears. It falls off of his face, and he becomes regular old Aizen again. Now, he absolutely has kept 
some of the power that he gained here. His Reatsu is still tremendously strong to the point where in the Thousand Year Blood War arc he seems to have grown even more powerful and even with his Reatsu being suppressed to his body he can destroy the bodies of Shinigami nearby. And he would even regain Kyokusui Getsu after spending some quality time with it while in lockup. But crucially here, at this point, Aizen has lost almost everything. His evolutions have been totally stripped away from his body. The Hogyoku is still attached to him. They are still fused, so Aizen will always be immortal, as it can't presumably easily be removed. But what Ichigo theorizes as well is that Aizen at this stage wanted to lose his powers so that he could be kind of just like everybody else. Because he's always been so monstrously above the rest of the universe, this is where he wanted to lose everything to let go of his powers, hence why we see him that symbolic shot of him dropping Kyokusui Getsu, he wanted it all to go. But with Aizen sentenced to 20,000 years in Muken and subsequently locked up, that about wraps it up for his evolutionary process in the closing chapters of the Oranka arc. Let me know, guys, in the comments below which of Aizen's forms was your favourite. What did you think of this whole Hogyoku evolution he underwent? And what did you think of how it made his overall battle feel? All of those chapters that it spans, what did you think of his fight? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. But until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. I'll see you then.